If you're not a drummer, programming drums is often the most practical way to get a drum kit on your recording. Learning to program your own drum parts using MIDI can be a very useful composition tool for any kind of artist. We're going to be using Reaper's bundled virtual instrument, Resample-O-Matic 5000, yes, that's what it's called, as our drum sample player for this song. If you're looking for a more versatile drum instrument, there are lots out there to choose from. However, that goes outside the scope of this video, and I want to show you what you can do with the tools you already have. So what is MIDI? Well, MIDI is an acronym. The letters stand for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And unlike recorded audio, MIDI is more like an instruction set that specifies note on off, pitch, velocity, and other messages. So when you press middle C on a MIDI keyboard, the keyboard doesn't actually make a sound. It sends a message to play the note middle C. And at the same time, it also tells how quiet or how loud to play that note. MIDI can be very versatile. We can program a drum pattern with electronic drum samples and then swap out the sounds with acoustic drum samples later on. So MIDI allows you to program notes in a way that gives a lot of flexibility. In my case, I want to program a simple drum beat that lets me change the sounds of the drums if necessary, or even if I just feel like it. Now, you'll need to have downloaded the drum samples that are included with this course. So, in the Finder on a Mac or in File Explorer on a PC, we're going to extract the zip file and then move those drum samples into our Documents folder. It should be in your Downloads. I'm on a PC, so the process is slightly different on a Mac. But basically the same. So here we go. I've extracted the drum samples. And I now have a folder, and I'm just going to move that to my Documents folder, which is just available to me here on the left-hand side. That should also work in a Mac environment as well. Let's just double-check that. Click on the Documents. I see here we go. Audio Hacker Drum Samples. That's what we're looking for. So now let's get back to Reaper. First thing we need to do is create a new track which I'll do by double-clicking in the track area, or Control-T or Command-T on a Mac, and we're going to name it. That's always the next thing we do. In this case, we're going to call it Drums. Now we're going to make sure the drum track is selected by clicking here on the number, just on the right of the track panel. And in the timeline, we're going to make a one-bar selection, kind of like we did with our labeling. So we're just going to go up here. In fact, I'm going to zoom in so I can see more closely, I'm just using the scroll wheel to zoom in. I'm going to make a one bar selection. I can double check that by looking up here in the top right, and I see starts at bar one, ends at bar two. It's exactly one bar long. That's what we want to see. Now, what we need to do is insert an empty MIDI item. And we can either do that from the insert menu and go to new MIDI item, but there's also a shortcut for that, and that is simply Shift I. And this creates an empty MIDI region on the track we selected for the time we selected. So in this case, on the drum track for one bar. Now we need a MIDI instrument to play our drum samples. So we're going to click on Effects to open up the Effects window. Now this is a bit uh, overwhelming. There seem to be lots of options here, but we're looking for an instrument. So we can filter that by clicking on the Instruments label here on the left-hand side. And again, we're looking for our resample o 5000. So we can just double click that, and the plugin will open up in its own window here. So now we need to load in one of the samples that we downloaded. So how do we do that? Go to the Browse button, and we look for that folder. So we know it's in our Documents, Audio Hacker Drum Samples, and I'm going to start with the Audio Hacker Kick Sample. Click OK. There we go. It sounded like a kick drum. So now we need to tell Resample-O-Matic what note we want our kick drum to be. There are standards for this, and it's good to use them. Because if you have access to a different virtual drum instrument in the future, it will be a lot easier to swap out drum sounds. The general MIDI value for a kick drum is 36. And where do we put that? That is in this section right here, the Note Start and Note End. So I'm just going to type in 36 and 36. And that's going to mean that only when I press the C2 key on my keyboard am I going to get the kick drum sound. Some other things we should take note of here too. We do want to be in sample mode. 
Other options are Note Semitone Shifted and Freely Configurable. Note Semitone Shifted would be great if we had a, a sample that was a specific tone, because then we could play it like a piano or a guitar or anything like that on the keyboard. But the drums, we just want it to stay the same pitch. Next thing we need to do is add the snare drum. So how do we do that? We only have one spot here. Well, what we do is we select this over here. We select this sampler instrument and we're going to use copy and paste. We're just going to control C or command C to copy, control V or command V to paste. So now we have two kick drums, so we don't really need that. But what's great is that we've told it where to look for this sample. So now from this drop down menu, we can simply choose our snare drum. There we go. And the next thing we need to do though, is we need to change that note start and note end. And the general MIDI value for snare drums is 38. So now we've got our kick and our snare set up. So I'm going to close this window and we're going to double click on our empty MIDI item to bring up the MIDI editor. Now in the MIDI toolbar, there's a drum button here and we're going to click that and that's going to give us our drum view rather than this piano keyboard view. And now labeled on the side here are our two samples. We can see we have our kick and our snare. And now what we can do is place our drum hits where we want them on this grid. So I'm going to program a simple backbeat with the snare drum on two and four and kick drum on one and three. So beat one, I'm going to put a kick, which I just double click to put on. Same thing with the snare here, kick, snare. There we go. So what does this sound like? I'm going to turn the repeat function on down here in the MIDI window transport bar and we'll hit play. <laughs> you can hear me clearing my throat on uh, one of the other tracks. So there we go. We just have a really simple kick, snare, kick, snare pattern. We also uh, have our grid here set to triplets, which is good because that means we're going to have the same feel as the guitar. So we could change one of these kick drums or we could add an extra one right here. Let's hear what that sounds like. I'm going to hit W to go back to the start. Mm. No, I just want to keep it simple. So I just double click that to go away. So now we programmed our one bar drum loop, but how do we put it in the song where we want it to be? We don't need it at the beginning here. In fact, I want this to start when the strumming starts on the guitar, which is at the second guitar solo. So let's close this. Let's zoom out just using the scroll wheel. And of course our session is very clearly labeled. I can see solo two starts right here and I can just click and drag this region over to start right at solo two. And I'm, what I'll do is I'll make sure of that. I'm going to move my playhead here. I just clicked in the timeline and I'm going to scroll, use the scroll wheel to zoom in. And I can see, yes, I start right on beat one there. So let's just hear that. That's better. Now I want this to go through the rest of the song. So do I copy and paste? Well, I, I could do that, but What's really great is I can just grab the right-hand side of the region and drag it out and it will automatically loop. So I will just go right to the end of the song. Looks like the last strum actually happens here. Let's just take a listen to that. The same old That's exactly where I want it to stop. Perfect. So that's great. So now I've got a bit of a drum pattern in the end of the song, and I think it could use some percussion, and I have a loop ready for that in the next video.